Habakkuk 2, verse 2. This morning I want to speak to you on the subject of write the vision. Write the vision. The Lord laid this message on my heart before I really even was contemplating that this was Senior Sunday. How many believe that God can write a vision yeah. on your heart and on your yeah. life? Let's read it. I'm going to ask you to repeat a few things as we go. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Would you say that? Write the vision. And make it plain on tablets that he may run. Say run. Run. Who reads it? And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated this morning. Praise the Lord. Spirit spoke something into my mind just a few minutes ago and I thought I had that place marked, but now it is. All right. Write the vision and make it plain that he may run who reads it. Write the vision. Before we really get started, let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever met a person, or you might even know them now, who never made any plans, never set any goals, just got up every morning flying by the seat of their pants? <laughs> now, I don't know. They may accomplish something, but they're not going to accomplish a whole lot. Because we must have a direction in our life. Can I get an amen? amen. And, and the word here, uh, the Lord is speaking to Habakkuk and he uh, says to him, write the vision. Make it plain. And I tell you that the Bible has a whole lot to say about vision. One of the best definitions of vision that uh, I saw as I was studying this week is this. Vision is the ability to see what could be and what should be. Now think about that. All of us see issues and problems in this world. But can I tell you that God did not call us just to see issues and to see problems, but to see solutions because He is a way-making God. Can I get an amen? Yes. And so uh, a vision is the ability to see what could be and what should be, to see things differently and better than they currently are. Amen. Now first, before we get too far down this, I want you to understand that there's plenty of self-help books in the store that tell us about setting goals, about having vision, about making plans. But I'm not talking about that kind of vision. I'm talking about a vision that only God can give to you. And I'm talking about a vision that can only come to pass if God's hand is upon it. How many know what I'm talking about this morning? That God can lay things upon our heart and upon our mind and give us direction, uh, give us purpose for this life. I'm here to tell you that you are not a coincidence. Even you being here was not a coincidence. But God has a purpose and a plan for your life. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. So there's plenty of books about it, but it's a different kind of vision. And most of the time, not all the time, but when God lays a vision on your heart, it's so large that it's impossible without God being involved. Right. There's a, that kind of vision. And the good news is, when God originates a vision, then He also orchestrates. Hallelujah. What does that mean? That means He's always behind the scenes yep. causing it to happen. Even when we don't understand it, 
And even when we are confused, even when we're like, okay, Lord, I'm going to try to follow after that. I don't know really what that means. But God, because God, if He originates a vision, then He is always orchestrating. He is always making it come to pass. The Holy Spirit is always working in our life, setting things up for us to even meet people that we have never met before, uh, to come across people who can help the vision or the plan come to pass. Do you believe that? Yeah. Yeah. Talking about vision this morning. Amen. Now before you get too far, I want you to understand that God is a God who makes plans. Yeah. That He, uh, in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says this, For I know the plans I have for you, <coughs> declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. And not to harm you. And plans to give you a hope and a future. Now think about that. I know the plans. Aren't you glad? Amen. That God knows? Yes. And if He knows, He's going to make it possible. Right. And if He knows, He can reveal it to us. Right. And if He knows, I, I would just bet that He's already made provision. Come on, I'm preaching now. Right. Uh, and if He knows the plans that He has for you, then He's going to make a way where there seems to be yeah. a way. When right. it seems Amen. impossible, when it seems too big, He is the God who makes yeah. a way. Yeah. Yeah. I know the plans that I have for you. Plans prosper you. Yes. And plans that will not harm you, that will give you a hope and a future. Aren't you glad that with God we've always got hope? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, I believe it is possible for us to understand and to know the vision that God has laid upon our life individually as well as a church. And as the closer we get to the Lord, the more that plan begun, becomes uh, clear and begins to be revealed to uh, to us. You see, life's too short to just wander around. Right. It's too short uh, to be twiddling our thumbs till Jesus comes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it, it's too short, and so we must be about the Father's business. Uh, uh, we must be on uh, the journey that that the Lord uh, wants us to go on. You, you see, all of us are on a journey. Do you believe that? In this life, everybody uh, is going to end up somewhere. But it is only a few people who end up somewhere on purpose. Yeah. That's what vision is all about. It's about ending up somewhere on purpose. Yeah. Now, if you've ever been around me, you know my sense of direction when I get in a car is not worth much. I can drive into a parking lot uh, in Walmart and get turned around. My wife's saying, amen. Uh, and cut out the wrong side. But there is a vision that God can give to you. That can direct your life. And you can know that you are walking hand in hand with the Lord. And He can give you that security. And He can give you that peace of mind. He can give you that direction for your life. Amen. It's a vision. A direction. And the Lord impressed upon Habakkuk. Write the vision. There's something about writing that's powerful. That's right. Uh, especially when you write out goals or plans or visions. How, how many in here, just on a daily basis, write out a to-do list? All right, we got some people that say they do. And I would not get anything done if I did not do that. Right. I'm just telling you. Because cause, cause I can just get busy and not really accomplish anything. But today I want to help you. If God has laid something on your heart, be bold enough to write it down. Right. Because something happens in your heart and in your mind when you write it down. Yeah. When you are bold enough and you believe that God has given that vision to you, that plan, that goal, that dream, if you will, then write it down. There, there's something about writing it down that makes it uh, makes us accountable. Yes. Maybe that's why we don't like to write it down. Uh, because we don't want to be held accountable. But the Lord uh, lays visions and dreams and, and things upon our heart and life and we need to write them down. 
The other thing about writing down visions and dreams and goals, especially if you're looking corporately as a church, then we all understand it. And we all can understand where we fit in because of how God has gifted us and talented us. And if it's written down, then we can slip into our place and we can understand and we can flow into the place that God wants us to be. And we're not a, a, a square peg in a round hole. Right. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, there's just certain things that you're good at that, that, that nobody else might not be good at. And there's certain things that, that you aren't good at that your neighbor might be good at. And God has called us to work together. Do you believe that? Yes. To accomplish Amen. great things uh, in this life and great things for the kingdom of God. Now, I don't know why this keeps coming up. Maybe the Lord's trying to tell me I need to start running again. <laughs> But I was thinking this week when I, when I, the one season, there's a reason why it's one season. I didn't really like it. The one season that I ran cross country, we would show up and every week there would be a meet and we were to run 5K, 3.1 miles. And it was over, uh, Fields, through creeks, back into the woods. And we're not talking about running on a flat uh, blacktop surface or upon a, a sidewalk. But when we would get there, they would hand us a map. And you might want to look at this because otherwise you're going to get out there somewhere and you're going to get lost. <coughs> Right. Come on, help me. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. And we must have a vision. We must have direction yeah. from God uh, so that we don't get lost in this world. Uh, so that we accomplish what God uh, wants us to accomplish. Now, now I didn't have to really worry about that because I was always running uh, about second to last. And so I could see the people in front of me. And I know what direction to go. But I looked at it anyway because I thought I might get really far behind and not just end up lost and they might leave me. But we need to have a map. Yes. A vision. A plan. A goal. A direction. Whatever you might call it. We need to have and to hear the voice of God. God, help us to understand your plan. Amen. Help us to run towards it and to not get lost along the way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Proverbs 29, 18 says this, Where there is no vision, uh, the people yeah, perish. Uh, one, one version, one, which I like very well, it says, Where there's no vision, people the people cast off restraint. And even better, one says, where there's no vision, the people run wild. Can you imagine just going in every direction, running wild? That's not God's plan. No. That's not God's purpose for your life. And as a matter of fact, I was speaking about having a map in order to run that race. God's given you a map. Amen. Yeah. The Word of God is our map. Amen. It's our direction. Uh, it's the, the way that we should go. So God, help us to run in that direction that you yeah. want us to run. Right? The vision. But the vision has to be more than just words. How many knows we can write anything? Right. And it's probably not going to come to pass unless we put some passion and some energy behind it. Yes. And so when I say write the vision, what God has laid upon your heart, begin to head in that direction. You might say to me, but pastor, it, it's such a large thing that I don't even understand how it could possibly come to pass. Well, put one foot in front of the other and see if God doesn't make a way. And then put another foot in front of that and just begin to walk with God and begin to follow the vision and the plan that God has given to you. There's a reason 
why uh, the, the Lord gives us visions and, and things that are bigger than what we can imagine because it requires faith. Amen. Right. I didn't read it. That's what the Lord laid upon my heart as I was getting ready to come up here. I want to read the rest, the first four verses of Habakkuk chapter 2. Listen to this. Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. That they're not going to have this. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Now hear this. Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, it requires faith in order to follow the vision that God has laid upon your life. And sometimes you don't see what's out there, what's under your feet. But as you begin to follow and to hear God and by the leading of the Holy Spirit, you begin to move in the direction, then you will accomplish things that you never thought was uh, possible. Can I get an amen? Amen. So we, we have a vision from the Lord. Now let me say this. Two weeks ago, actually more weeks ago than that, several weeks ago I spoke preached two messages that talked about the need for us as a body to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. As a matter of fact, I preached that message last night at the Hispanic church about a second wind. Yeah. Uh, and God just laid upon that upon my heart two weeks ago. Uh, I preached another message about uh, there was no breath in them, about the need uh, for us to have the infilling of the Holy Spirit uh, in order that we might rise up as an army of God. Uh, but what I want to tell you is that infilling of the Holy Spirit is not so that we shake or so we shout. Uh, come on now, help me out. We all like to do that. Uh, uh, many of us have been in old time revivals uh, where we probably measured the, uh, the greatness of the revival. Uh, help me uh, by the number of bobby pins that were up here uh, uh, where people shouted and, and, and they have those, uh, 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 you know, heavenly beehives. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. And, and they, they, they fell out as they shouted and they worshiped God. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I like to shout and I like to praise God. But the reason the Holy Spirit comes upon you and in you is that you might accomplish the plan and the purpose that God has called you to do. We need to be filled with that power, but that power comes with a, for a purpose. Yes. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Aren't you glad for the power of God? Yes. So you can accomplish His purpose, His plan. Young people, God's got a purpose and a plan for you. Right. Many of you are already pushing towards it. And I tell you, don't give up. Keep going. Even when it seems hard. Even when you don't know how you're going to get there. Whatever it might be that God's laid upon your heart, just keep pushing towards it. Amen. And keep believing God. Yes. And ask the Holy Spirit to help you. You see... There was a woman by the name of Florence Chadwick who was quite the swimmer. It was a fog shrouded morning on July the 4th, 1952, when a young woman waded into the water off Catalina Island. She intended to swim the channel from the island to the coast of California. Long distance swimming was not new to her. She had been the first woman to swim the English Channel in both directions. That morning, the water was cold and numbing, and the fog was so thick that she could hardly see the boats that followed along the side of her. And several times, uh, sharks had to be driven away by firing rifles. And she swam that day for over 15 hours before she asked to be taken out of the water. Her trainer tried to encourage her to swim on since they were so close to the land. But when Florence looked, all she saw 
blood was the fog. And so she quit one mile from the shore. <clears throat> we need vision. Yes. Yeah. We need vision yeah. so that we don't quit, so that we don't give up. Yes. So that we don't uh, lose out right at the very last. Listen to what she said. Later she said, I'm not excusing myself, but if I could have seen the land, I might have made it. Huh. Why is vision so important? Because I want you to make it. Amen. I want you to fulfill the vision and the purpose that God has for your life. We need vision. Look at your neighbor and say, we need vision. We need vision. vision. Yeah, we need vision. Now tell them, write the vision. Write the vision. Now tell them, follow the vision. Follow the vision. Amen. Run with the vision. She said it wasn't the cold or the fear or even the exhaustion that caused her to fail. It was the fog. Her inability to see the shore Put it another way, her lack of vision. You see, without vision, we lose hope. Yes. That's right. Individually, you need vision in order to keep you going, to keep hope alive. And corporately, we need to have vision so that we're not running wild and that we're doing what God wants us to do. And we keep hope. And we keep that vision and that dream alive. Look at your neighbor and say, don't let it die. Don't let the vision, don't let the dream, don't let the plan and the purpose of God die in your life. About twice a year I talk about vision, mission, the purpose of God. Why is it so important to reemphasize and to rehearse the vision? Because so many times we fail because we lose sight of the goal. We lose sight of the shore. Paul said it this way, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> oh, by the way, Florence Chadwick walked off the same beach two months later, swam the entire channel setting a speed record because she could see the land. Hallelujah. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. And when He gives you a vision or direction or a plan, don't you give up. You seek God. If a fog begins to roll in, you begin to seek God. You begin to look at His Word. You begin to declare His uh, life over you and over that situation. <clears throat> and the Lord will lift that fall. Amen. And you'll be able to see. Hallelujah. So what's our vision? What's our purpose? What's our mission? I want to spell it out for you. If you're a note taker, I'm going to try to say it slowly and talk about each point. Our vision is to be a family-focused church that offers ministry to every age group. Amen. Amen. While our children leave us on Sunday morning, sometimes they stay because they need to experience the power of God moving and the flow of that and, and in the worship. But sometimes they go down the street and they hear a message that is specifically designed for them so the message of the gospel gets into their heart and into their life. We are a church that is family focused, uh, that believes in ministering to every age group. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can you follow that vision? That's right. Do you believe that? Amen. What's the next thing? We are a church that is to be multi-generational. Different age groups. And multi-ethnic in scope. Can I tell you that this vision did not come to me, this goal, these goals did not come to me last night. 
They actually came to me and I preached a similar message four years ago. Why, 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 Pastor, why are you saying that? Because some of these are already starting to transpire. Four years ago, we did not have a Hispanic ministry. Four years ago, uh, we were not able to minister to every age group like we can now. Hallelujah. You see, when you write it, there's power in it. When you begin to follow after it, there's power in it. Whenever uh, you trust the Lord and you begin to head in that direction, there's power in it. And so we are to be multi-generational and multi-ethnic in scope. Yes. <laughs> Can I tell you how God meets the need when you begin to follow His direction? Last night as I preached to the Hispanic church, God had already provided an interpreter. Isn't that awesome? For the first time last night, I preached with an interpreter. But even better than that, Karen was her name, and she came from another Hispanic church, and she speaks and she interprets every week. But even better than that, God provided someone in the house. <laughs> Olga came forward with me as I prayed with people last night. And I, I would say, do you understand English? Then? <laughs> Some of them did. But I was able to say, Olga, tell me what they need to have prayer for. And then tell them the Lord says this. You see, when you begin to... Uh, this is powerful, folks. When you begin to proceed in a direction that God has called you into, He will meet the need. Amen. And He'll make a way for you. I don't understand why. I don't even understand why me or why even this church that God has laid it upon our hearts to have a vision to reach more than just white people, but to reach multi-ethnic uh, groups. And God is making a way. Hallelujah. Amen. To reach outside the four walls of the church with the gospel message of hope. About four years ago was when we had the first block party. God laid it on my heart. It's based on the scripture where Jesus feeds 5,000. We're not feeding 5,000, but close to 500. That's not too shabby. We're a church of our size because God gives you a vision that is greater than what you think you can do on your own. And so when you begin to launch out outside, man, this is powerful, folks. You need, you need to be taking notes uh, because it applies to your life. When you begin to launch out and to try to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, He makes a way and it begins to happen. Hallelujah. We had that first block party about four to five years ago with the sole intention to share the love and the light of Jesus Christ and the gospel message through our willingness to give. Number four, to be a word-driven church. What do you mean by that, Pastor? A church that trains leaders, pastors, evangelists, and missionaries. That equips all the saints to experience the blessing and the favor of God so that we can accomplish more for the kingdom than ever before. We must be a church that is founded on the Bible. Thus saith the word of God. Amen. If we get away from it, we need to refocus and get back to it. And finally, we must be a church that is empowered to carry out the specific vision that God has placed upon our life. Yeah. With the Spirit, all things are possible. Amen. With God's empowering, we are able to do more than what we could imagine. Right. God has given us a large vision that will impact not only this church, but this city and this county and the region surrounding it. That's what He's called us to do. And I hope right now 
that that right there makes you nervous because it makes me nervous. To think that I and this church and the Hispanic church and all those associated with us can impact not only this church, but this city and this county and this region for God. It is a large vision, folks. And I know is with God. All things are possible. Great vision. This church has been here for over 70 years on the corner of Douglas and Depot. And we have a great heritage. This church has accomplished a lot of things. But I'm here to tell you that our best years are not uh, behind us, but they are ahead of us. Amen. 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 And God is enlarging our territory. He is widening our borders. And He's giving us more influence and more potential to reach even more people. Because God's plan is bigger than what we have seen so far. He has given us, come on, help me, the keys to the kingdom. And He's given us the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And He expects us to run with it. Uh, have I can said, write the vision and make it plain. Put it on tablets, if you will, that he who reads it might be able to run. And he expects us to run with it. He expects us to turn our world upside down, just like the disciples did in their day. We must be a church that is still growing and still going strong after we're gone. Hmm. Still impacting future generations. Still winning people to the kingdom of God. What am I saying? Hear me, graduates. A church or a person with vision thinks about the future and makes provision for the future. If we want to be a people of vision, we must think about the future and make provision for the future. Right. I'm about to wrap this up. Let me tell you, that's part of the reason why we purchased the land. The 7.14 acres. That's part of the reason why, with God's help, we'll build a pavilion out there this year. Hallelujah. That is the reason why eventually it will be the new home of Cross Point Church. But let me tell you that the land and the buildings are not the vision. They are only a tool to reach the vision. Amen. If you are here uh, throughout the week or even on Sunday mornings, there are times whenever uh, the capacity uh, to minister to every age group is difficult. Especially on a Wednesday night. When we got about 30, sometimes even 35 uh, children uh, running around and, and, and we're trying to minister to them. There's a purpose and a plan behind heading towards that new land and new building. That we might be able to, because right now, there are constraints. But God is a God who lifts constraints. Amen. Amen. Yes. And makes ways yeah. possible. Well, there seems to be no way. And so God has uh, given us that vision. It is merely a tool. Again, I want to say it, the land and the building would be merely a tool to get to the vision of reaching more people for Christ. Teresa, would you come to the piano? Today, we're called to be a part of something that is bigger than us. Hallelujah. <clears throat> If you want to be fulfilled in your life, one of the tickets, one of the things, one of the ways to do that is to be a part of something that is bigger than you. Hallelujah. And God is calling us to be a part of something great. Yes. How do I know? Because I see the need. Vision is about first seeing the need and then seeing a way to make it better. <coughs> I don't know about you, but I'm not satisfied. I'm not happy.
that on any given Sunday morning in Woodford County, that only 15% of the people go to any church anywhere. That's not okay. It's not good. And God has called us to reach with the gospel. To present the gospel with our mouths and with our message and with our lives so that more people 